Mountain Sun. Welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast, guys. I am your host, the Fist of Conchu, uh, the Mighty Mighty Dilbot, and with me is always the the Fist of Kun Loon. Okay. <laughs> Ryan Malcolm, because you know fists. Yeah, fists. One's the left hand, one's the right hand. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, today we'll be uh, talking about a book that I haven't read since, like, I think since the first time it came out. Like 2008, nine. 2011, dude. Oh, 2011. Okay, it's not that bad. It's weird because, like, he kind of, you could kind of say he always has some, like, sort of like a book going on. Like, it's mm-hmm. not ever a huge gap, at least from as far yeah. back as I can remember. Yeah. The 90s, he right? He always has something. Yeah. Like, and he's had some really decent runs prior yeah. to this. I mean, we have obviously, you know, Bill Sinkevich, right? Like, yeah. he fucking just killed it. Um, yeah. early and then the 90s there's that, there's, had some there's that run with Finch a Finch run I really I think I, who wrote that I think it was uh, Charles Huston or something like that yeah I don't know but I, the art was just fucking, I mean I love David Finch's art and it like totally fit the yeah, fucking 100 percent you know what I mean like the muscles rippling <laughs> the, yeah. the friggin the, the the extra battered cape like mm-hmm. And then like there, there was, was like a, there was a vengeance of Moon Knight also wasn't there yeah. after, that. and also he had like a short run on the West Coast Avengers like Moon Knight's always been around right yeah. Moon, Knight, Moon Knight's kind of always been around but he always he was always kind of played like a secondary character and everybody always knew like oh has always known he was crazy so yeah this definitely taps into that okay this is I have to I have to say like I've read a lot of Moon Knight I read the the Brian Wood stuff. I read the, you know, He Who Shall Not Be Named, Mr. Warren Ellis' stuff. Yeah. I named him anyway. Um, you named him anyway. Because those are good. Those are, I like, yeah. whatever. Warren Ellis is an asshole and kind of kind of scummy right now, but I really dug that run. Like, that. that's where we got, like, Moon Knight with, uh, what was what was the name? Mr. Mr. Knight. Mr. Knight, right. Mr. Knight with the fucking suit designed by Declan Shalvey, which I, I really dug that run. I thought it was really yeah. cool. This, though, I have to say, going back and reading it, having read those series that took place after this, this might be the craziest yeah, that I've yeah, ever because, seen this motherfucker. You know, with his split personalities, you know, fucking... Yeah, uh, because his, his split personality... Okay, we'll, we'll just get into it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so, Moon Knight, Mark Spector, he is uh, moves to Los Angeles, of course. I, I do love if that. You're, if, if, you're, if you're a freaking sociopath, split personality friggin what is it asperger's <laughs> like no. uh, all sorts of all sorts of all sorts of split personality disorder and uh disassociated disorder and i uh, get yeah, all sorts of things of course you go to los angeles of course you go and become a, a television producer and he becomes a television producer and he makes a show loosely based loosely based on his life and i kind of figure it i kind of kind of picture it as like a show kind of like xeno warrior princess or like or like hercules right where it's <laughs> it's one of those tv shows that comes on like saturday afternoon but it has like a strange strong cult following <laughs> yeah you know what like, i was thinking do you know what i was thinking when i was reading it this time too like i i wish i would have thought to do a little bit more research but like what was bendis doing at this time you know what i mean like was he adapting some sort of work that he had done so he was kind of like making that a springboard into like a little bit of this story you know like because it's possible right like what if he kind of put himself in that mark specter role of working in hollywood and stuff because you kind of get like towards the end too there's some certain moments like situations that happen where i'm like oh i wonder if that happened to him because he has no. constantly had his work adapted. I mean, look at it, dude. Like, a character that he fucking co-created was in a movie that won an Oscar. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's crazy. Miles Morales, Jessica Jones. Like, people fucking, yeah. like, he has cr- crafted and created, co-created um, so many amazing characters at Marvel. And maybe not so much at DC. And Naomi is, is going to have a show, which, I mean, I think she's an awesome character. But, like, yeah. so it's just, it's interesting that he... Well, it's, uh, what's crazy about Naomi is it's a television show, but he has like these the television show. It's literally a CW show, but it's like uh, it's it's some of the episodes are getting directed by like Oscar winning, Oscar nominated directors like Ava DuVernay. Like amazing, the fact the simple fact that she's like spearheading the pilot is just 
yeah so i just thought that that aspect was cool but i think what i think obviously if, if you haven't read it or if you have read it we have to talk about like the main thing of this book which if you look at the cover of number one it's moon knight standing on cap shield one hand has the wolverine claws the other hand has spidey's fucking glove spidey's right? Glove, right and <laughs> At first, like, you know, you think, like, he's getting, like, contacted by his by Avengers teams. Three. Because at, at this point, he is, in, I believe at this point, he is in the Secret Avengers with Cap. Yeah. Cap has recruited him, right? Right. But then you realize, like, no, they're not really there. It's in his fucking head. And yeah. he has taken on some of their personalities, at least inside his head. Like, maybe right. not outwardly, but inwardly, he's having yeah. conversations with Wolverine, Captain America, and Spider-Man. And, and what, what, I so think it's, it's brilliant. What I, oh, yeah, I think it's brilliant, too. And what I, what I really like about it is, like, each of those three characters are representative of different parts of them. So it's like Cap is his, his heroic conscience. Wolverine is, like, the murderer, right? The, 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 the bloodlusted, you know, that that bloodlust and then spidey is kind of like his heroic innocence and you know they all it all takes play like each every time every time he goes on a mission it's like he has a conversation with those three but it's, it's literally he's just having a conversation with himself like going into a mission going into like you know busting up some drug dealers or or you know trying to figure out who the new kingpin of los angeles is right yeah. and you know, it really plays out well, and then I think that the 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 added element of Echo, which I totally for, even forgot that she was in this. Oh, I, right? have to talk, I have to talk about that. The, okay, first off, we didn't even say the whole creative team. We said Bendis. Um, yeah. But Alex Malib is the yeah. amazing artist of the book, and Matt Wilson, um, colors, which you everybody that listens to us knows we love Matt Wilson. He's we one of our Matt favorite Wilson. colors. It's we so, talk about it that. so much. I, so, I, like I said, I'm like, if I ever meet that guy, I'm getting him a coffee or something because yeah, he's he's, he's one of the busiest. He's one of the busiest men in comics. Yeah, like his name is in everything, and he dabbles with every publisher, not just like the big three, but like everybody. He's everywhere. Yeah. And and Alex Maleev too. Like I, I'll be honest. Like when I first read Bendis and Alex Maleev on Daredevil, I was like, oh, I don't know about this art. I, you know what I mean? Like, and I, it just, you know, I was, I don't know, I was fucking end of middle school probably so like yeah. I, I just i hadn't really you know i hadn't really come to appreciate the different types of art styles that we could get like i think i i don't want to say i like a more generic look or anything but i feel like there was just a certain type of aesthetic that i liked probably 90s stuff probably 90s art styles were, were yeah. more what i liked and this was a departure but i love his art and i really dug it on this book going back to echo I hadn't fit like I said, I hadn't finished this, right? So Mario, Kevin, and Nick had done an episode on this. And I didn't listen to it because I didn't want any of the ending spoiled for me. But one thing that Nick brought up, and I forgot Echo was in this, was they fridged her. You know what I mean? They fridged her in this. And they kind of the way she was used was almost as a plot device to kind of get mark where he needed to be is yeah. how i feel and yeah. and that's kind of how i agree it's like nick told me that she died he didn't give me the whole details of it so i mean i already knew like reading i'm like okay she's gonna die but how does she die and i was like oh man like, she's such a great character she's such she's an serious. interesting character and i feel like this book did her dirty you know what i mean i mean thank yeah. god she's back thank god she's back and I think that Bendis wrote her, he wrote her well. I think mm. he wrote her well in New Avengers, right? Like, she was a part of that team that was built with Wolverine and Spider-Man and Spider-Woman and fucking Luke Cage and all that shit, which, you know, still to this day is, like, one of my, one of my favorite yeah, one of my favorite teams. Yeah, one of my favorite teams. So, like, uh... when, so reading this, I was like, ah! Like, like, the way she died, I was like, this is so lame, dude. This is, that's it? That's, yeah. That's, that's Very anticlimactic, right? Yeah, and like, fuck, I don't know. Like, so that that would be my major gripe with the book. Oh, if if I had any complaints, right? And I'm sure I'm not the only one. Nick felt that way too. Uh, he also he, maybe he's a little bit more critical of Bendis. Like going back and reading stuff, I 
still I don't maybe I'm not as huge of a fan of his newer stuff. You know what I mean? Like his newer DC stuff, I'm not like super high on. But going back and reading his Marvel stuff, I don't I haven't been disappointed. I mean, I went back and read Daredevil not that long ago. I read the first uh, two or three of the Ultimate collections of his Avengers. You know, recently and um, yeah. So I don't know. I it's the writing is really good on here. Everything is really really good on this book. Mm-hmm. Like coloring, writing, art, story, Echo it was my my one. So I'm sorry, I had to say it before I forgot because you brought her up. So no, no, no. It was like, it was like one of my one Greg too. It's kind of it's kind of and like when when did she die? She dies like in the eighth issue. So it's like there's still like a whole three ass issues without her, right? After this whole buildup of her like just like helping and like just being a part of the story ever since yeah. like, her appearance in like the third. She had like a good five issues, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You might you, you might as well. You, I, I felt like they 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 were gonna. If we're, they're gonna do her like that, they should have they should have done her like that for like the eleventh or the twelfth issue, right? Or yeah, not the tenth or the, the it, it was twelve, right? It was 12. twelve issues, yeah. Yeah, so eleventh like like sh- or it would have yeah. been. I I just felt like her death was mistimed, <laughs> right? Mistimed and also un- but also unnecessary because right. like I guess it got him to where he needed to go because he had that grief going on, but like he's such a nut bar that. He doesn't really need, he doesn't need grief. motivation. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's fucking insane, dude. He's insane enough to recruit an ex Shield agent to work on his show to create <laughs> replicas, <weapons>. replicas <laughs> of Wolverine's claws, Spider Man's web shooter, and Cap Shield. Because yeah. he's rolling Cap's around. Laser shield. Because he's rolling around with these things, dude. And and yeah. like that's that was I don't know. It, it could have gone two ways. It could have come off as really corny as fuck, like, oh, wow, he's ro- rolling around with their weapons, you know? But no, it, yeah. it made sense, and it was done in a way that, like, I liked that he had the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. That the, <laughs> forget, what's his name? Buck, right, 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 Buck. So I liked that, um, you know, Buck, he didn't really, he wasn't in awe of Moon Knight, because Moon Knight's, like you said, was always looked at like a, as like a second, third tier type of hero, you know, yeah. every, and they totally everybody played knows on that. he's crazy. Yeah. And they, and they totally played on that in this. Like, like, he's like, like even Wolverine, he's like a second or third tier Avenger. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, same thing with Echo, like second or third tier Avenger. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a whole tier system. I know. And, and the Avengers themselves are aware of it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? See, and, and that's, that's the stuff about Bendis that I love. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to put that in the comic book. Yeah. But we as fans, like, I, I mean, I'm I'm sure you and I are not the only ones, but I like to hear that. Like, it's not just fans that think, like, yeah, you're kind of like a third level tier. Maybe you're like a, a C-lister. C-lister. You're like a D-lister. D-lister. And the Avengers think so, too. And the Avengers think so, too. So just so you guys know, we don't think very highly of you as well. Like, that's kind of like what Wolverine's being, you know? Yeah. And of course, Wolf, Wolverine would be the guy to say that because he's not gonna fucking hold back. He don't give a shit. And it's like, it's like, it's like you're not gonna send Moon Knight against Galactus. Yeah. No. I would, yeah. What's like, he gonna you know do? I mean? Throw a fucking fucking moon thing at him? You know what I mean? Like he's gonna be, you know, he, the Moon Knight is like he, he's on evac duty. <laughs> he's telling people to get out of the building. So it's, it's kind of like Moon Knight's doing, right? Yeah. But you know. Well, whenever whenever Moon Knight does have his own series, like all the stories, especially this one, like it fits, right? He's doing exactly what he needs to be doing. He's doing the street level stuff. He's doing the stuff that you know may be a little bit too small for A listers. You know, you're not going to send Captain America to Los Angeles. Why? <laughs> for what? <laughs> I feel like Cap just wouldn't do well in that setting too. Just hearing yeah. you say Cap in Los Angeles, I'm like. No, he needs to be like, in New York. Stay in like, New York. Well, like like Wolverine would do well in Los Angeles because I feel like Los Angeles is like three steps away from Madripoor. I feel like uh, Wolverine could be anywhere, dude. Yeah. To me, he's a character that like it doesn't matter where you put him, he belongs. Yeah. You know, because he's been alive for such a time that he's had to have lived pretty much everywhere, everywhere. on this planet. You know. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. But anyway. Uh, going forward, it uh, so you know, Moon Knight uncovers this. Uh, he he he, what he he goes to what he thinks is a drug buy, but it's not drugs at all. It ends up being an Ultron, the 
crazy thing about that is it's like we we're just talking about galactus we we're just talking about like you know like for an ultron level event moon knight should be running evac he shouldn't be dealing with ultron at all right dude yeah he shouldn't even be holding that head i'm just it like that was such a what a weird what a weird fucking like way to or not not a weird, what a weird device for him to fucking be in contact with like him and ultron like hearing that in the same sentence moon knight and ultron just doesn't fit but bendis he did it in a way that like okay this this kind of makes sense like because even moon knight calls says it like i don't know what to do with this pretty much yeah, you know? like, I, need to call the know how to feel. yeah. <laughs> I gotta call the avengers for this one but then you know that's that's when we get the big reveal like when he's talking to wolverine spider-man and cap about the ultron helmet you know we, they're, they're having this whole conversation as to what to do with it and then you know that last that last uh that last uh that last whole page panel where it's just him yeah where it reveals that that whole conversation was happening in his head. And then at that point, we realize, oh, this is how crazy pants he is today in this run. He's going to be this crazy pants. Okay, cool. I think that putting Moon Knight in this type of situation, right, even though we have the Ultron aspect of the book, even though we have him talking to three of the biggest Marvel heroes, right, inside of his own head, it still feels grounded. It doesn't feel over the top. You know what I mean? Like, even... Even when we do get the Avengers later on, you know what I mean, as we as we progress towards the end, and I think that Malieve just really helps because he's got that fucking gritty style that just adds to the fucking, you know, um, street level element. That's mm-hmm. why he was so good on Daredevil. You know, probably my favorite depiction of Hell's Kitchen is drawn by Alex Malieve, yeah. and or and or Michael Lark during Brew Baker's run as well. But right. you know, I think that. Watching the types of moves he makes when he when he does that to Buck, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he captures Buck. Spoiler alert: it's issue three. You'll see Bullseye on the cover, <laughs> but it's not Bullseye. It's Mark. Right. It's Mark right, right, right. dressing up like Bullseye to test him to make sure that he's not going to snitch him out or rat him out. There, you know what I mean? Like, right, no. these kind of moves are insane. A normal person does not do that. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't see Cap torturing somebody. You might see Just Wolverine. loyalty. You might see Wolverine do it, okay? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe he was tapping into his inner Wolverine. I don't know. But no, no fucking self-respecting hero is going to torture an, a potential ally like that. You know, you'd find a yeah. different way to test them. But right, right, right. it's, it's um, you know, and... I think that, it, and this is probably, it goes back to, like, with Echo, why it bothered me so much is that I really liked the banter between them. It, yeah. it, it, if you would have told me that that would have worked, I would have told you you were crazy. But it did. It definitely yeah. worked very well in here, and I think that um, the potential for that could have been interesting. You know, like, let's say it kept going. And that's another reason why I said, like, oh, I wonder if this is Bendis kind of playing on something in his own. Because he talks about the show getting canceled and they couldn't finish. Like, yeah. did, did Moon Knight? Like, was this book canceled prematurely? Like, did he have more thoughts? Was it always going to be 12 issues? Because I feel like yeah. this could have kept going. This yeah. didn't, this, it didn't feel like it ended abruptly. But it definitely felt like there, there was probably a little bit more gas left in the tank. I know it yeah. says at the very end, like you, Moon Knight will return in Age of Ultron, which I have never read. That I, I don't. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't need to read it. Thank you. You just gave yeah. me a review. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I mean, that it was, was a mess. Bendis. It was, it was a mess. Well, Bendis was at the tail end of his Marvel tenure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was in the it final was, home stretch. It was a bit of a mess, and I was just like, this is unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just like over Ultron too. To be honest with you, Ultron is not a villain that is super interesting to me. So, this is the most interesting Ultron has it's ever like, been. To okay, me. we get it. Humans are stupid. Uh. I like this Ultron, <laughs> just a head floating around, no talking. This is the yeah. kind of Ultron I'm cool with. You know, I it yeah. just this doesn't this doesn't appeal to me. Now, maybe if a different, maybe if a writer does a really cool take on it, maybe I would be into it. But I have not personally read anything that has come out since you and I were a lot were born. 
that has piqued my interest in terms of Ultron. There's way more interesting villains, even Count Nefaria in here, who is not even really, he's kind of like the behind the scenes villain for most of it until we learn who it is. Like, right. even he was more interesting than Ultron, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, seriously, he was definitely more interesting. But I, uh, what I, what I really take from this, you know, when they talk about pinks, <laughs> pinks hot dogs. Yes. And they're like, oh, it's worth the movie here. First off, Pink's is trash. Pink's is for tourists. Pink's is gross. I hate Pink's. Guess what? Bendis is a tourist. He's not from LA. So that's yeah. probably why he thinks Pink's on dog's good. There's yeah, a lot of better places. I fucking hate Pink's. Yeah, I'm just like, if I'm, if, if I'm going to go to Golden Golden Apple, because Golden Apple is literally right across the street from Pink's, right? If I'm going to go to Golden Apple, I'm not going to Pink's. I'm going to Hot Wings Cafe. Like, it's, you know, I'm going to get some chicken wings, some bomb ass chicken wings, and not going to Pink's for their freaking novelty ass dogs. Fuck out of here. Can't even eat that thing. Novelty ass hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, look, dude, I think, well, first of all, you and I are always going to be more critical of food than, than, than the average comic book fans since we're cooks, you know? But yes, yeah. Pink's, is, Pink's is not the business, dude. So Pink's if, you, if you're reading this and you're like, oh man, if I ever get out to LA, I go to Pink's. Aren't you I mean, done? I mean, I mean, I mean, try it. If you're not from, if you're not from town, try it. Go ahead, like you know, experience right. it. Wait in that long ass line. That's fine. Why don't you just a, ask this for person some twenty for fifteen dollar for fifteen dollar hot dog that to the ends are cold, the middle is hot, but you can't eat the middle because it's just covered in shit. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. We, I mean, if you guys want better re- food recommendations in LA, just fucking <laughs> ask us in the comments. We'll drop some some better recommendations than your boy Bendis was giving you in this, because that's fine. Yeah. But that's I do, fine. I do like the fact, I do like the fact that he referenced something, something you Los Angeles, to. right? You have to, dude. You have to do it if you're gonna write about a major city, a major city. You gotta throw in some references too, you know? Like, and you notice that yeah. they don't. You do can it. go to Tommy's, like. <laughs> You can go to Tommy's. Go fucking in and out. Get some animal sound supplies. That would have been funny. Now, if a, or, or go, if a fucking go to, like, creator the OG does... Tommy's and then, like, you know, break up, like, a gang fight at the OG Tommy's, that would be great. <laughs> I don't I just want to hear somebody at one point talk about animal-style fries in a comic book because nobody, unless you're from, I think, L.A., right? I guess they have in and out in Vegas, and, and do they have them in Arizona? I think they have maybe one. I think, I think they have, like, one or two okay, in Arizona. Right. But, like, that would be super, like, a deep cut right there. You know, like, yeah. not many people know what the fuck that is. They, they hear animals. Or, like, order, order, or like, order stuff off the secret menu, like, like yeah. a flying Dutchman. Yeah, yeah. Like a flying or, Dutchman animal style, or, like... Monkey style. Have you ever had monkey style, friend? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm getting fucking hungry now. Um, I'm getting hungry. All right, that's enough. That's enough food talk. Uh, but, yeah. All right. I, but, yeah. I, I just want to say, real quick, yeah, I thank you for fucking, like suggesting this book because i know at first i told you i didn't have access to it and i got really lucky when i walked into the shop and i saw one through 11 i read 12 online which i think everybody knows i don't like reading online but i had i wanted to talk this with you and like it's been such a long time since it came out um long enough to where and then i as i was reading it knowing where i had where i had finished so there was like i only read the first five so seven issues of the series i didn't even get to finish but i really Mm -hmm. dug it dude and like Moon Knight, from the design, from the fucking, you know, the his his origin, all that stuff. Like, I've always been into Moon Knight. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just, I, I wish there was more. I wish there was, like, more solid runs because I feel like they, like, even Ellis, right, six issues. Brian Wood, mm-hmm. six issues. Like, it's not like we get long runs. And that's why I'm hoping the current one run with Jed McKay. I'm hoping yeah. that he's given the room to kind of, like, build out this fucking this world of Moon Knight and really delve into who he is as a character. You don't always have to lean into the crazy aspect either. It's not necessary. I mean, like I said, this is the craziest Moon Knight I've read. But Oh, yeah, um, 100%. Absolutely. Uh, I I just really like the whole him in Los Angeles thing, you know. Uh, I mean, this is, this is, okay, you know, obviously because we're from here, like, you know, and... Like, you know, reading comics all of our lives. Everything takes place in New York. New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. But I'm sitting here like, bro, crime in Los Angeles is like the perfect setting for like a superhero to be around. And finally we get Moon Knight, right? Which is, he essentially becomes like 
like, you know, the Los Angeles Batman, the most Los Angeles Batman we could ever possibly hope for because it's Moon Knight. He's crazy as hell. He is essentially, you know, he's he's a he's not a boy billionaire, but he's he's a movie producer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, but who moonlights like that pun who moonlights as a uh, freaking what do you call it? as a superhero at night. And what I really like about it is Moline really. You know, whenever Los Angeles is depicted in comic books, it's always this bright, flashy, you know, orange sunsets. But like, you know, at nighttime, like no one ever really gets like that. The other side of the uh, the other side of Los Angeles, the dark, the gritty, the 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 smoky freaking uh, piers at night, the, you know, the yellow lit freaking streets of like, you know, little uh, of like um just the, the the yellow street lamps, like he really caught that aesthetic, right? He really caught that aesthetic and made Los Angeles, a nighttime Los Angeles, seem like this menacing, cold place that's like lonely. And you know, he caught that, and I I, I really appreciate that. And um, you know, it really puts a different shine on Los Angeles and how it should be perceived, especially you know, because when you think of Los Angeles, all you think all all tourists think is it's Hollywood and beaches, right? It's not that. It's not that. Like you and I can attest to that. That it's not that at all. It's no. CD motel rooms, uh, CD motel rooms on the cliff of a freaking of P- PCH. It's freaking dark warehouse parties that you have got to walk through tunnels to get through. It's like it's these dark places that you don't ever get to see. And the simple fact yeah, that take, yeah, night, take a trip to downtown people, LA at night. Take a trip to downtown LA at night yeah, and fucking tell me it's fucking yeah. all beaches and fucking movie stars because that's why. Yeah, that's, that's that not, is far it from is it. It is far dude. from it. That's so why, you know, I, I like that you brought that up, dude. It's like, it is it is crazy that there's no, like LA would be the perfect setting for a fucking vigilante. You know what I mean? Not like a bright mm. superhero, but kind of like a gritty, maybe not super dark, like not a but maybe like in the middle. I mean, like yeah. uh, between somewhere between like Batman and uh, trying to think of one that's not super light. I don't know, but between like Batman and Spider Man or something, something like that. Because L A yeah. is like rife with crime, constantly yeah. since we've been kids. Yeah. It's like it's always been that way. They just, I don't know. I guess New York is just like New York is like the op is like the the yin to yin to into the yang, right? of uh, yeah. LA. Like you look at New York, you think, oh man, it's that fucking gritty fucking like tough place to live. Oh, LA's easy. Oh yeah, man, it's just fucking all, like you said, all sunshine. It's all beaches, fucking people partying. Oh, no, yeah. Come on, bro. Beaches and movie stars. Fuck out of yeah. here. No, it's not. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's just a perk. Yeah, it's a that's, fucking perk. That's, that's, the, that, that, that's, that's the positive to all the negative, right? Yeah. And like and like I said, Malib captures that. Like, mm. you know, there's there's very few scenes where it takes place during the day. But the the, the but the but the scenes he does capture like at during the day like he gets that 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 the sunset aesthetic where it's like purple and oranges that transition into well, yellow. That's Wilson too. That's Wilson, bro. Yeah, that's, that's our boy Matt Wilson. Yeah, that's, good. that's that's Mighty Matt. Like really, ca- I I feel like he puts LA in a different light per se. And Agreed. I yeah, really yeah. appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Like, yeah, you know. Uh, the parts in Hollywood, it's, it's it's funny, you know. It's, it's like, funny, on, like dude. it's it's very it's very it's very kitschy, you know, when he portrays Hollywood. Yep. But also, like the the crime stuff that he portrays in Hollywood, like you know the 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 crooked strip bars, right? you know, there's the there's the crooked strip clubs and like all that stuff. Like, bro, there's some <laughs> there's, yeah. there's some CBS strip clubs that you know you walk in, you're like, I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> right and you know he captures that he he gets that you know and uh you know the, the whole thing with the lapd how how like they how uh, how the, the, perspe- the perspective of the lapd uh, on new york it's like they have all the superheroes like i'm glad i'm, I'm glad i just got to deal with, 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 with like with like some bloods and some crips i don't have to deal with ultron and then ultron shows up at their doorstep right <laughs> yeah yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's the it's the dialogue, dude. Bendis, that's I think that's his bread and butter, dude. It's his fucking snappy dialogue, and I think that maybe that's why I'm not as high on his stuff at, at DC because I feel like it's just it fits Marvel. Like he inherently is just he's Marvel to me. Like when I think of like the great Marvel writers, Bendis is always on that list. 
You know what I mean? Like, he gets the characters. I mean, I know that he likes DC, but I feel like his, his, uh, his style just fits it so well. And, and, um, yeah, I just I fucking love it. There's that scene where um, <laughs> it's I think it's at the police station, and there's that like chick that's dressed like Jean Grey. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. So Bendis always does that. He'll always have like those Easter eggs of yeah. characters or like somebody dressed up like a character saying right. something that's like breaking the fourth wall almost because right. Jean Grey was coming back at this po- at this point in time. Yeah. So I thought I'm that surprised was- there wasn't I'm surprised there wasn't like a reference like like you know the 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 fools in Hollywood who dress up like superheroes to take your picture. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would have been <laughs> like, great. That would have been a good one. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's like, a missed opportunity. Be, yeah, that's a missed opportunity right there because man, those are some of the funniest. This is so funny. <laughs> I'm, I'm not knocking, not knocking anyone's profession, but no. that's a, that's a silly it, profession. It's, it's pretty ridiculous when you walk down fucking Hollywood Boulevard and you see people just standing there, just dressed like superheroes. I'm like, do you do this all day? Like, this is this is what you're doing with your day? I guess, yeah. I guess, dude. Whatever. I mean, I'm sure they do. They have to make money, right? Yeah, you can't you can't knock a guy for making money. That's the honest yeah. way to make money. No, and I'm <laughs> saying like I'm saying like. You wouldn't do that all day unless you were making money. You know what I mean? So, like, I wonder, like, how much money do these guys pawn? But that's whatever. That's beyond that's, the point. That's, uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying, like, I want to go dress up like fucking Spider-Man and stand on Hollywood Boulevard or anything. I'm just curious then, how much these dudes make. Do if, you're watching, do if you're watching, if you're watching and you do that for a living, please let me know how much you guys make. I'm curious. Yeah, I would love to know. But, uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, Moon Knight is yeah. uh Moon Knight by, by, by Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev is a definite must read. Definitely. Uh, it, it's, it makes me wonder, like, you know, what direction they're going to go with for the show, right? Because. Um, so many fucking ways. There's so many like, ways. Yeah, there's so many ways. It's like, there's no real, real one way to be like, hey, like, is it going to be an amalgam of like multiple stories? Like, you know, is it gonna be the origin story plus Finch's story? Like, cause like, but like the 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 leaked picture, it looks like Finch's Moon Knight, <laughs> right? Yeah, but I I want to see it full. I want to see the actual. I hate looking at those leaked photos because they yeah. always make the costumes not look as good as they're gonna be. Because sometimes you'll see the one where it's not the actual costume; it's like an action scene one, so it's not fully like yeah. the full regalia. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's like obviously, this doesn't seem like a story they're going to pull from, right? Because this well, maybe it's too they heavily, can. Well, it's maybe too heavily tied. It's too heavily tied into Marvel overall, though. I don't see how you could like Wolverine, Cap, Spider Man. Let, let's say you no, try no, to no, Cap. Oh no, no, you no, this is that you mean. You could put Cap in there, right? You could put Cap. You could put Spider Man, Tom Holland, right? And then you could put like, and then you replace Wolverine with somebody. I don't know, Thor, T'Challa. Well, they can't do T'Challa now, but you know what I mean. Um, I guess I just feel like this is this is. But I mean, but I mean, but, 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 but I mean, as far as like the boy billionaire, the boy, the, the boy, no, no, not the boy billionaire, but like the the upper echelon uh, movie well, yes. television producer, they can make they can make that like the source of his money. Well, right? I feel like they're gonna really play into the soldier of fortune type thing. You know what I mean? He was a mercenary. I think that they'll yeah. play heavily into that aspect of the character. I feel like I saw that. Dracula might be on there. I or heard that, that uh, I heard that Werewolf by Night might be in it. I mean, dude, this is the way, dude, you know, to fucking really flesh out the supernatural stuff. And I think that they should. This could be the way to segue into Blade. Yeah. With oh, Marshall yeah. Ali, which by the way, dude, I I don't think I've ever said it on here, but my god, what a great casting. That dude is one of the best actors of this fucking generation. He is yeah. amazing. He's the best part of Luke Cage season one. Yeah. The the easy. best part. Easy. And it's not easy. even close. You know what I mean? Like that, when they killed him it, off, that was the biggest mistake they fucking did with that with that season. The biggest mistake. They yeah. never should have killed him off. But you know, I think that Moon Knight, I feel like they'll pull maybe from, you know, the Mr. Knight stuff. I think that yeah. that might be something that they, they would pull from. Or we might just get a straight up like origin stuff, adapting some of the earlier stories, but modernizing it, mixing it, like you said, amalgamation. This story, I feel like they probably won't pull too much from. Now, maybe a season mm. two, yeah. maybe a season two, they pull from it. 
but I feel like this is going to not only like introduce us to Moon Knight as a character, maybe show some flashback scenes, but then also they're go like if you if Werewolf by Night, if that's true, right? They're going to use this as a way to kind of introduce. I hope they don't do too many characters though. I don't want to see like, oh, here's this week's or this this episode. We're going to fucking introduce this person. Like I don't want to see that, but. I hope they mind. do Nightshade. I have the first I have Moon Knight number three, first appearance of Nightshade. So I hope they get it just for a simple fact that that that, that book's gonna skyrocket. It already has. Moon Knight number three, yeah. Nightshade. Because I had it listed at work and I didn't like the announcement came out and I wasn't quick enough to adjust the price. Ah. Yeah. So Nightshade isn't the isn't the fucking. There you go. You're sitting on some money, bro. I'm sitting um, on some money. I'm, I'm sitting on a lot of money. Actually, so thank you. I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you That's are. Great. Great. Yeah, I fucking got rid of my key issues. So, um, but yeah, uh, Moon Knight by uh, by Bendis, Malieve, and uh, Wilson Matt was Wilson. a phenomenal read. Um, I I highly recommend it. I think I if, it. if you can find it, I know it's out of print. Um, but if you you know read it digitally, I guess I I, I would hate for anybody to like. You know, miss out on it be stubborn like me and be like well i won't read it because it's digital um it's it's a really good story definitely a good one to read um leading up to the show or if after once the show does come out and you're looking for some some moon knight uh to read this is a really good one along with some of the other runs that we mentioned um you know throughout this episode but yeah that's all i got um for moon knight yeah um that and go read the new series. The new series is actually oh yeah by good. Jen McKay and yeah, Jen Alessandro McKay. Capuccio. Yeah, yeah, really good. So go, so go ahead and do do that. Uh, read up on Moon Knight. Uh, I think that there's an epic collection of Moon Knight too. Uh, but yeah, Moon Knight, Mark Spector, Mister Knight, whoever he's going by, we're we're super excited for it. And uh, finally, I'm finally glad that my schizophrenic Egyptian god Batman is finally getting some uh, some shine. That's cool, dude. I know. I'm digging it. I'm digging that they're fucking giving us some characters that, you know, like I said, DC take take a uh, take a page from Marvel's book already. Right. You guys are you guys are fucking up. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. And if you're yeah. not already following us, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Comic Lounge. Dylan at the Dillbot on Instagram. Dillbot is dope on Twitter. Uh, like, follow, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. Um, oh yeah, T Public link to get some Comic Lounge merch. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds.